in education will be our legacy in this industry. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. At Fanvia, we believe our smile is our business card and our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trade. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends, and be a part of the Sandia community. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you happen to be, do me a favor. Type in that chat bar where you're coming from, guys. I hope that you are excited as I am about today. But before we get started, I've got to bring the guy that's back there, Mr. Wizard of Oz, co-Wizard of Oz. Andrew has the morning off, so let me introduce you and welcome back Mr. Kurt Gerheim, co-founder of San Via. Kurt, how are you, buddy? Hey, Sam. As always, great. Welcome, everybody. We're looking forward to another Transformation Tuesday. I hope you bear with me. I is, I'm not really the wizard because of my hairstyle. I'm actually the sultan. So we'll go with that one for a while. Well, listen, my friend, I want to thank you for what you do being back there. You're going to be handling all those questions and kind of bringing them up just in case uh, yeah. that the ones and just make sure, guys, that you understand that not all your questions may be answered, uh, especially if we've already hit on it or we're going to really address those questions that pertain to what it is that actually the awesome, incredible person I'm going to introduce you to, what she's actually doing. And then stay tuned. we got some exciting things coming up. Thank you, Kurt. we got some exciting things coming up that we're also going to talk about. But let's talk about today. Uh, I love this girl. I actually even brought my little poodle out. Look at my little poodle right there. That's just for you, Cindy. Check that out right there. But I got to tell you, this woman is incredible in terms of what she does in – casual, I mean, just up styles, hair in general. She's a great colorist. I've worked with her at numerous shows throughout Canada, and that's Cindy DePlantis. She is a Redken artist. She's the Chatters ambassador, and she has her own brand, meaning she's the CEO of DePlantis of Hair Official at .com. And don't forget to follow her. Really, you need to follow Cindy at Cindy Duplantis. And Kurt will be putting all of that stuff up. And we want to invite you to her website at DuplantisHairOfficial.com. Now, a little bit about Cindy. She's based out of Toronto. This woman has worked Fashion Week in New York, throughout Canada, and Europe. She's uh, definitely, you know, works behind the chair at a salon called Chatters. But she's an international stylist. She's traveled through international just doing shows. I love her work because it's so real. You know, when you look at it, you can go, oh, that's that's Cindy's work. It's absolutely beautiful, as you're going to see. And you're really going to get some things that you can use at home. She's, I mean, this woman works really hard. She has taken it everywhere that she goes. She's a celebrity hairstylist in Canada. She's on the news, morning news, quite oft often doing some makeovers. And uh, she's incredible, incredible, incredible. And uh, please welcome and let's bring on Cindy Duplantis, please. Oh, my I gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, going to yeah. cry with that, Sam. <laughs> hey, look, at, did you see my little poodle right here for you right there? That's for you, that little poodle. I did. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm I'm handling my internal poodle. That's for sure. <laughs> well, Cindy, we're really excited to have you on board, my dear, today. Today's a special day because I know you. And the reason I say that is because I know you. And I know you're going to give these people some things that they can uh, take back to what it is their environment is. And we all know with what's going on. But time seems to be an issue. Simplicity seems to be really valuable to a lot of people. And then you're discovering that things are changing because you had an interesting conversation with the team about how things are changing at the chair and the way people are working with their hair. So we're excited about that, Cindy. 
Oh, I'm so excited to bring this because it's true. I feel like we're in this funny spot right now where we don't really know what's happening with trends. We're working with our new normal. And right. you know what? As much as like we can be a little frustrated with it, it's actually really exciting because we have some really amazing things that we can do and start like starting here. Yes. <laughs> Right. I think that that's what's so special about today. So I'm going to cut you loose. You might see me come back on, uh, you know, a split screen like this. And that's because if I've got a question or something, but my dear, have some fun. And once again, thank you thank so you. much for sharing with the Sambia community. We love you. Enjoy. Oh it. Thank you for having me. I mean, this is this is absolutely amazing. And good morning and good evening, everybody, wherever you're joining on. And of course, we are going to be taking some questions. So if you do have anything, feel free to, to write those in. If I can answer them or Sam, I'm sure will jump on and help me out with that as well. So I wanted to dive right into it. So if I'm talking fast, I apologize because I have so much information that I am dying to give you today. Because like I mentioned before, we do have a new normal right now and we're dealing with a whole bunch of things that we've never had to deal with in the salon and as much as it can be a little bit overwhelming I look at it differently I look at it as exciting and right now this is where we can start creating trends. We haven't seen any red carpets. We haven't seen any new launches of movies or anything like that. So right now we can do this and we can do this with what we have with us and our tools right now in the salon. And I'm also gonna be using some great hot tools that maybe you've never tried and you've always wanted to. So this is like a really cool way of seeing how you can put this all together. So I'm going to get going and I'm going to start off with our natural curls. So I know that Sam mentioned about the poodle <laughs> and my hair is a little bit poodly, but this is why I wanted to show you this because I don't know about you, but when I'm doing curls in the salon and even on myself, my natural hair texture, sometimes it's a little bit of a cross finger and like pray to the hair gods that it's going to work out, right? When you're in the salon and somebody mentions they want to try their natural curl, which I strongly suggest because we are in the, in the warm weather right now, uh, we want to make sure that when they are finished their look, it looks amazing. And we're not crossing our fingers that those curls aren't going to work out. So I'm going to show you some like must have things to be able to do to ensure and guarantee those natural curls. So first and foremost, my hair, I have just let it air dry and I have gone in with a diffuser. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do when just say you flipped your client's hair and her hair looks a little bit too big. Has anybody been there before where you've gone over, you've done the diffuser in the hair and now it's actually a little too large and you can tell by the look she's giving herself in the mirror that you've gone too far so how do you bring that down how do you break that down well the biggest thing is we don't want to break out the curls so we want to just soften them so a great way of doing that is by loosely just putting your fingers in the curls itself you want to grab your blow dryer and sorry i don't have my uh, diffuser on it but i want you to picture the diffuser there and what you're going to do is you're just going to run up and down the hair itself. And what you're doing is slightly giving it a little bit of a tug. So you're stretching out those curls. So it'll give you more of a beach wave look. So if the hair is too big, once you've brought it up after the diffusing, you can just hold it out, slightly stretch out. You don't want to run your fingers through those curls to break it up because it'll create frizz so this is a great thing and i'm telling you this is a great value to add with your guests because you want them to be able to do this look at home you want them to be uh, comfortable with doing it at home and you also want to share this information with them because then they're going to share it with their friends as well because you're just uh you're that great of a hairstylist <laughs> so once you do that and you drop it down it looks good you're feeling comfortable remember if their hair goes really short and they look uncomfortable with that also, you can do the exact same trick and you can stretch it out. I do this when I find hair gets a little too curly underneath and not as curly on top. You can stretch it out and that helps to give length. So that's number one. Now I'm gonna jump into how to fix it with your curling iron. I know that sounds kind of nuts and it's funny because a lot of my guests feel like they can't use a curling iron in their naturally curly hair, like as if they're cheating or something. <laughs> but that's not true. We know that's not true. So what I'm going to do is 
if you notice on my hair, I get really curly underneath and on top, I have a little bit of that um, humidity frizz <laughs> and it's not as curly. So what I wanna do is break up those pieces. And I'm also showing my guests how they can do this as well. Now, a hot tip for you, when we're trying to create a natural curl with a curling iron, if I go in with the tong like this and start spinning it around that way, we call that a ribbon wrap. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna flatten out that curl. So that's great if I really wanted to flatten it out and uh, have it a little bit smoother. But what you're gonna notice is it's not going to be as natural looking. So because my hair has some texture, I wanna maintain that texture. So what I'm actually gonna do, and this is like one of my favorite things with this great curling iron, is I'm just gonna detach the top. So, and as I'm detaching the top, I just press this little button bring this off and now I have an instant wand. So now I'm gonna take these pieces, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spin that also helps to keep it looking natural and now I'm gonna twist it. Now when I twist it and I leave a lot of length in between each wrap, that is gonna give me a straighter curl, a little bit lazier, a little bit looser. So I remember even the placement of wrapping that curl around that the tongue of your curling iron there, you're going to get a little bit of a difference. Now, if I pull it and it's bouncy a little too much, then I'll pull it down with the heat and that'll help it to cool. So now I can mimic those curls that I have in my hair. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm telling you, this is like one of my favorite hot tips that I show with my guests at work because now they can do their natural curl at home and they don't have to worry that it's not gonna turn out correctly or you can do it behind the chair as well and you know that you're guaranteed for a good look and it's going to turn out correctly. So I'm just gonna do another one here. I can see a little bit of frizz happening on this other side, so I'm gonna switch hands. Now, as I'm doing this on just say my guests, I'm talking them through the process of what I'm doing. And does anybody know why I would be doing that? It's because I want them to be able to know how I'm recreating this. Now, sometimes we kind of get lost in our conversations, don't we? In the salon of what's going on, especially with what's going on right now. And uh, I always like kind of tell them and I make a joke about it and say, I'm taking a time out because I just really want you to see this so you can really achieve this look at home. Because we all want our guests to look fantastic, what, not only when they leave the salon, but I want them to be able to recreate this at home, like no problem and I want them to be able to feel comfortable. So not only am I wrapping it around on the top to like eliminate a little bit of that frizz, I could also wrap it around on the inside here if I find that my hair has gone too frizzy. Now if you notice this like bad boy right there, I'm gonna show you a really cool way of now creating this with something different. So just say the curling iron isn't available for you in the salon, but you have your amazing Symbia blow dryer. So I wanna show you how you can actually use this and a round brush. Now, usually when you see a round brush and curls, like that just looks like a big knot waiting to happen. Anybody else afraid about that? <laughs> so I'm just gonna just give myself a little bit of a mist here. So just say if you got your client's hair to somewhat of an almost dry state and now she has to run into the salon because let's face it, we're dealing with um, some places aren't able to use blow dryers right now. Some places can use them really quickly just because you wanna see the color that you created in the hair. So you wanna be able to do a, a little bit of a blowout. But just say if you're doing that quickly and her hair is like a little bit out of control and you're trying to do that natural curl, I'm gonna show you how you can fix this. Now I'm gonna take this curl. Like I said, I, I just gave it a little bit of a mist. Now I'm taking my round brush, my Sambia, and this is the really tiny quarter inch. Now I'm gonna take my blow dryer, and this is the motion that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you it before I actually turn on the blow dryer so you can hear me. But as I'm using the blow dryer up to the actual brush itself, I'm rolling it down and I'm giving it a spin giving it a spin, giving it a spin. And I know for anybody who has a little bit of that or trying to protect their wrist, which we all are, all I'm doing is I'm giving that a spin with my actual fingertips. See, I'm just running this along. So what that's going to do is that's gonna give me a natural curl. Now I'm gonna do it with the blow dryer. 
So I might have to just give this a quick little mist again. There we go. <laughs> so excuse me for one second while I turn on my blow dryer. I'm gonna do that again. And now we're getting into more of that natural, oops, sorry, I left that running. <laughs> now we're getting into more of that natural curl. Now it's still a little bit damp, so I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna do this once more. Now just say if I did this and I was able to break up a couple other pieces as well, this is to ensure that you have more of a natural curl in your blue or in your natural. Is that what I'm trying to say? Yeah. This is to ensure you have a little bit more of a natural curl. So we always see as a, our round brushes as doing a glamorous blowout, but you can actually do a very natural beach wave with just your round brush. And I always love the smaller ones because they work really well. What's really important while you're doing that as well is right before you want to do that, you want to use a, a volumizing product in there. I definitely love the Reckon Full Frame. It's a mousse and that one's really good. Or I'll even use a little bit of a leave-in conditioner. We have our Extreme Recovery uh, for bleach because I have my balayage and that works really well too. So those are my favorites for our natural curl. Now, I wanted to show you this because I'm totally aware. How many of you have clients that say their hair gets very big and voluminous, but not right here <laughs> on the tops of their heads, right? So I wanted to give them an option as well, or you as well, to be able to do behind the chair to fix that spot. Now, if you've created um, a defusing with the hair and you've scrunched it up, usually that's enough to give it volume, but we do have those guests out there that like to have their hair just naturally air dry, and they're always worried about how to get a little bit more lift in their root area. So I wanted to show you something that is fantastic. So I know in the beginning, and I'm gonna to be totally honest, when I saw our micro crimpers, I was a little nervous because I wasn't sure exactly how I could use this. And if you've ever used a micro crimper on um, anybody, it can be a bit of a process, right? So we think that this could take a long time by doing a micro crimp all the way through somebody's hair. But what's really cool about it is it's actually more for creating volume and texture. So even though my hair has texture and I am, I'm getting volume in here, I want to create a little bit more volume into my root area. Now, you guys have to give me a little credit because I'm doing this on myself right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go in. I'm just going to make sure that I can see perfect. There we go. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to go right to the root and I'm going on base such as this and just tap it. That's it just a little bit. Now I can already see that it's starting to build. If I was worried about showing a little bit of that micro crimping in the hair, then what I would do is go underneath a veil, a natural texture, and just do that on there. So what will happen is after I've created this micro crimping, I've just gone down, that natural will go on top and I'm already getting volume. So same thing I'm gonna do on this side. So I'm just going to bring that over. I'm gonna create a little spot here. Now I'm not gonna break up the curls, right? Cause we don't wanna create frizz, but I'm just gonna go right into the root. I'm going on base, holding it, tapping it up. I'm only doing about a length of the actual uh, micro crimper itself. So if you notice, I've tapped this and then I just do a little one, maybe cause I'm a little OCD. <laughs> so now I wanna be able to get that volume to be brought up. Same thing, I'm just gonna go a little bit more right here on base again, because I wanna have a little bit more of that volume. Now what I can do is bring over my natural, and you can already see, I haven't even run my fingers through, but I'm getting that natural texture that's bringing up that volume. So I'm gonna do it once more on this side. So I'm gonna show you nice and close. I'm just doing a little bit of a slice. What's great is those were the hairs that I did with the curling iron already. I'm gonna bring that over. So this is gonna be my natural veil. Now I'm gonna take the next section. I'm not gonna break apart those curls because I like the texture. 
And now I'm going and I'm sliding the um, micro crimper just right to the root and I'm on base. And on base is gonna give me a lot of great volume. So I'm holding it down for a second till I feel that heat. And I'm telling you, you're not gonna do anything by going close. You're gonna feel the heat on your head and it's not gonna get too hot. But when you're doing it on your guest, I always do the same thing. I squeeze right there and then I just go to the next like little spot, just you know quickly so we're not worried about getting any um, heat distribution. But because there is uh, a little bit of a gap between the hot plate and the ends, it takes a while for it to get really hot on the scalp. So if you notice, I have a little bit of that micro crimping in that root area. Now I'm gonna take my natural and I'm gonna fling it back over and I'm just gonna work that up. I can see that I have a little bit of a haze on this side and that's just my natural hair texture. But I'm gonna work that in. Now, talking about texture, this is like a great point. Now, how does that? what do you guys think of that kind of technique? I really, really like that because I really love to work with texture. So like I just mentioned, talking about natural texture is huge this year. I mean, let's embrace it. Let's see what we got. This is a great time to really coach and teach your guests how to bring out their natural texture. Now remember, over 75% of the population has some form of curl, wave, tight spiral in their hair. So why not show them how to do it and be able to show how you can actually do it at home and like it is going to be true, tested, guaranteed look. It'll be perfect. So these were like some of my faves that I love to share. Now going in into our next section, I'm going to be talking about volumizing with our up styles because I feel like that is a really big question that I get a lot of times, even in salons when I'm doing any sort of education and also just behind the chair. And my guests are asking me myself, how can I get more volume at home when I'm putting my hair into a bun? If I'm creating any sort of up style, whoops, I don't want to keep my computer screen there. <laughs> so I want to show you something that's really cool because I find this is like such an amazing way and we are all having it at our place. It is a huge trend right now and we're talking about scrunchies. So I'm going to step up for one second. I'm going to invite over my uh, three-legged model here. <laughs> and she's got a scrunchie in her hair right now. Now I'm using beige because I wanted to use something that was a little bit more neutral. So you can see how this works. And I mean, all our clients are rocking scrunchies. And I'll tell you, I've also tried this with uh, anything that's not neutral with a bit of color. And it usually tends to work out OK. But I do like when I'm using this as a filler to uh, get something that's a little bit matching to their natural hair texture. And these are one of the things that I, uh, I created as well. We've all seen those donuts, right? But they're kind of like hard to be able to share with your guests. So that's why I kind of like the scrunchie because it's very multi-use. So if you notice, I had her hair here. We all know that we all know how to create our, um, our, you know, just our quick. Remember that whole sock bun thing? <laughs> well, we know how to create that, and I'll just kind of mimic that showing. But I want to show you what else this is really good for. So here we go. So we have this. You can give it a little bit of back combing, the actual hair itself. And then you bring it over and you can totally create that whole sock bun feel. But I'm going to show you how you can do this and create it into amazing things like a French twist. French twists are huge this season because they're so easy. And you know what? We can all agree, like those haven't gone anywhere, right? They're a trend. They're a look that is completely classic. So, I mean, if you're getting married at bridal, that is a perfect option to be able to give to your brides that are coming in to get their hair done. Um, if they're going away, maybe this is something that you can give them a little extra value to show them how they can create this um, being away on them, be able to do this on themselves, right? So right now I'm just gonna brush out the hair and I'm gonna show you how to create a really simple French twist. So I'm gonna bring her back, just bringing her back into, remember that ponytail that I just created? I'm just in the middle back of the hair. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Now, if somebody has naturally curly hair like myself, could you do this on naturally curly hair? Absolutely, not a problem. So I'm just gonna slide this in and I'm just gonna create this ponytail. Let me tell you, when you're able to show this even to your guests, they love it, because it's that extra value, right? So we're gonna slide this down almost to the end, so it's like super loose, if you guys can see that. 
And now what I'm going to do is I am going to twist that up. Now, to be honest, I kind of like the way that that looks because if I just hid the bottom here, it almost looks like she just has a flower in her hair. How cool is that? So if you had something that was a little bit more of a different color or a pattern, it's definitely a really cool way to go. But in this case, we're actually going to hide it all together. So what I'm doing is I just slid that over top of that spot. Now I'm going to grab a couple bobby pins here and I'm just using a couple finishing pins. I'm just going to slide that right underneath that um, scrunchie itself. And what's cool is the scrunchie is actually helping to secure down those pins. So now, same thing, I'm just going to slide this over her natural hair, just sliding it over the scrunchie. Isn't it funny that we can use these as a filler? Oh, I would love to wear ponytails, but they always look flat at the top of my head and the actual ponytail hat. Can I do to hold up the volume? Yes. So, okay. So I'm seeing this uh, question right now that's coming up and I'm trying to read it at the same time. <laughs> so I'm seeing that we're we're trying to see how to get a little bit more volume on our ponytail. And I love that you asked me that because this is the time to be able to talk about hairstyles and how to create volume because I we all know that's huge right now. So how to not have that flatness on the top, I'm gonna show you. Now, are you meaning the flatness in the volume itself right here? Or are you meaning the actual ponytail itself? having flatness. Now what I'll do is I will show you both. So as I'm doing this, I'm actually just going to comb this over. So you can see as I was playing around, I'm just sliding these bobby pins. I'm gonna use this little comb, our little Sambia. I'm actually using the cutting comb right now on the finer side. And I'm just bringing this right over the scrunchie itself. It's hiding it all and it's giving it extra volume. There we go. And I don't know about you, but when it has extra volume, everything looks a little bit more glamorous. Just like the question that I just received about having more volume. We like to do that because if you're kind of doing like a, a ponytail and it's looking a little weak, having that little volume gives it a little bit more, a little something something. So as you can see, here we go. We have our scrunchie, whoops. We've got a spot that's showing, but all of this is super easy. now. Let's face it, I'm going to be real with you guys. These are things that actually happen, right? Like you see a little bit of this spacing in there. So I'm going to show you. This isn't like, oh, no, I hope she doesn't see it. This is just a quick little fix. All I want to do is to be able to get those hairs to stick together so it hides any sort of filler that I'm using. And in this case, is the scrunchie. So I'm going to use my Forceful 23. I'm giving it a nice little shot of spray. Now I'm just going to use my fine tooth comb same thing i'm just sliding it over so don't worry the look is not lost if there's something that's showing you can manipulate that hair because now it has a cushion and a base underneath to be able to use to brush over and hold so i don't want you to get worried about having a scenario like that there's always a solution to be able to to fix it so i'm in love with having just that little extra filler now, actually, since we just got that question about the ponytail, now we're going to go a little rogue and we're not going to talk about what I was just going to talk about. And I think because this is very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on um, another mannequin head quickly. And I'm going to show you how you can create a little more volume in that ponytail. Now, the biggest thing about creating volume in the ponytail is two things. If we wanted the volume to be in the front of the head, that's one. Or if we want volume to be in the ponytail itself, that's the second. So I'm going to do this really, really fast because I wanted to be able to give you a little extra value for this. So the easiest way of doing that is by splitting the hair into two sections. So if you know your volume area is going to be in the front, I'm going to split that into a section in the front. So I want to make that a completely different area. So if you notice on my mannequin head right now, I just have a quick little like section. I did from uh, side of temple, really the corners of the eyes. And I've created into a V in the back. And the reason why I created that into a V in the back, when I bring that hair back, it's going to cover any lines so we don't have any scalp lines. That is a must, right? We don't 
want to have scalp lines. It's kind of like a, a fashion faux pas for hair, isn't it? <laughs> so I also laugh at my jokes all the time. So bear with me. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to bring up my ponytail here. And I'm using my finishing brush. Now, does anybody know why we tend to use our finishing brush when we're bringing up our ponytail. Well, it's just because these bristles here are super fine and close together. They're great for gathering all that hair so you don't get those ripples. But you know what, I have to tell you, it's like one of my favorites and it's actually great for holding spray. As much as I wish somebody was beside me, helping me at creating these looks, there's nobody. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my hairspray and I just spray it right onto my finishing brush itself. That way I have a better even distribution of bringing that hair into my ponytail and an even distribution of spray. So I don't get that dreaded, like, you know, when you spray and you get that one little spot, that's exactly what we don't want. <laughs> so I'm just bringing it up into this area, making sure that my client's head is held upwards because if it was down and she puts her head up, you're gonna get a little bit of a saggy bottom there. I'm gonna secure this elastic down All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna bring this back. Now I have one other question that's coming in as I'm doing this. How would you handle a person that has layers and all the layers do not lay down? Would you spray to death or would you prep the hair before you even start? Absolutely, I would prep the hair before you even start. Remember, when you're creating an upstyle, it's a lot like creating a hat right? You have to start with the foundation and starting with the foundation is exactly what I was doing here. Now, if I wanted to really create this ponytail and I wanted to ensure it was going to sit great, I would already prep that hair, blow drying it in the direction of where I want it to sit. Now, because this is a spontaneous look, I'm going with the flow. So I'm letting you know, but definitely that is a hot thing to do. So if she has a ton of layers. If I already did a directional blow dry going back in that area, you're gonna be golden. You're gonna put it, be able to put it up just like butter. It's gonna be no problem. Now, because if I was to prep her hair first, I would make sure the directional blow dry would go back into that ponytail and this would go forward. I wanted to have lift and to have volume. So right now I am going to create volume in the front. I'm going to add a little bit of back combing because I want her to have that volume. Now when I create that back combing, I'm going to go in with my fine tooth part of my Sandia cutting comb here and I'm going to add some back combing. Now how many of you are like, when you, as soon as you hear the volume word you're like oh yeah I'm starting a fire you want to get that volume in there right I get excited <laughs> I won't lie and it's really good to be able to get that volume right but what ends up happening is there's so much back combing that's put into that hair when you try to bring that back and you want to slightly like brush out that nest that you just created there's something that's really interesting that happens to that back combing and as I'm just brushing that back that back combing ends up going into an area that I didn't want the volume to be. Does this make sense with a lot of you? How do you like, you know, when you're trying to create that volume, all of a sudden that volume turns into like an alien-esque kind of look, starts to travel a little further back and you have the volume right here where you wanted it at the front of the fringe. So what has happened is it's not because we needed to add more back combing, it's because we actually added too much and we're not thinking like that hair engineer that's creating that house to build that foundation. What we want to do is recognize the area that we want to create that volume is right in the root. So what I'm going to do, same thing, I'm going to go in, create that back combing and pushing it down right into the root. Now, right into our uh, base. And you see, I only have about an inch to an inch and a half of back combing and that to a lot of people seems like not enough. But because we're being strategic and we're thinking more like a hair engineer, we're gonna get definitely some great volume in there. So like I said, it's just, now this back here is only about a half an inch because I don't need to have that volume. Now because I created the volume only in about an inch and a half area, I don't have a lot of brushing to get rid of that back combing. So now I can just finger rake that back and now I can put that right into my ponytail. Now, if you notice, I had already created an elastic. I just wrapped it in super quick because we're doing this on uh, 
on the fly. So now I'm gonna get another elastic. The same thing, I'm just actually gonna take that elastic and I'm just gonna throw two bobby pins in it and I'm just gonna wrap that around the already existing elastic. So now I know it's going to last, it's gonna sit and it's gonna be secure. So I'm just gonna bring that back. So I, what I did was I inserted the first bobby pin, I wrapped it around that elastic, and now I'm inserting the last bobby pin, and now it's secure because it's around and under the first elastic that I did. So for that volume in that pony, you already got a pop-up because I made sure the bobby pins ended at the end, the underneath, if you notice, of that elastic. So it's already popping up that ponytail. Now, second thing we're gonna do to pop up that ponytail, now, cause I'm totally loving that texture here, is we're gonna use a little bit of the micro crimper <laughs> to be able to do that. So I don't wanna be able to see that there's micro crimping in it. I just wanted to be able to put a little extra texture in there. So I'm gonna bring some of her hair forward, just like a veil. And now I'm gonna go right to the base of the ponytail itself and add a little bit of that micro crimping. All right, so as I do that, I'm just scrolling along. I don't have to bring it all the way down. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this looks fantastic on naturally curly hair as well. Cause you don't see this like, you know, difference of textures, they blend so well together. And I'm gonna tell you, it looks amazing. So that in itself will help to bring up, I will put a veil of her natural over top. And now all of a sudden you have like a pop and pony. <laughs> How's that? How do you like that? All right, so I love working on the fly. So I'm loving these questions. Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna jump back into creating our next look with our scrunchie. So if you notice, I created this like into a French twist. What's really great is you can also do this actually as a lower look, a lower bun. And I'm not gonna do like that sock bun style, but I love this look because this is also something very doable and so quick in the salon, I'm telling you. Because right now, time is of the essence, right? Now I know there's some regulations in some areas that your guests can't stand for very long. So this is also another one. Just say, if you had to quickly give her a rough blow dry, and you wanted to be able to give her a quick little look so she can run out. Now, if her hair has a bit of texture, if her hair is uh, just rough dried and it has like a little bit of a fluffy texture, it's okay. What we're gonna do is same thing. We're just gonna roll this into a ponytail. I'm sliding it down and now I'm just rolling it up and over. Now you can totally see as I roll that up and over, it's totally completely hiding that scrunchie. Now what I would like to do is start from the sides and I just gather that into the bobby pin, slide that behind the scrunchie itself. And the same thing over here. I'm just going to slide that down so it's tucked in. And then I'm going to slide this side around exactly the same idea i'm just giving it so if you notice when you slide it up and over we're working with um the bending of the hair if you've ever noticed you get this and you're wondering what the heck cindy cindy said she could just tuck it in what you're gonna do is just give that a little bit of a spin a little bit of a twist that will contour it to go tighter um to the head so you'll be able to get more of that spin and that twist there now just like what she was doing before she was getting a little bit of the holes. Now I'm using mannequin heads purposely that actually don't have a ton of hair because I wanted you to see that you can create this in all lengths. Her hair is just about down to here. So this is like, or maybe a little bit past, but this is very doable on so many textures. Now it's clearly super easy to be able to do it on somebody's hair that's a lot longer and you don't maybe necessarily need the scrunchie. But I want to show you different looks because that's a big question I get, is how to create hairstyles with anybody with medium length hair um, that don't, doesn't have a lot of hair. So this is a really simple, easy, easy look. Now, if right now we have to think about masks, right? This is a whole new normal that we have that's happening right now. We're getting into our mask styles and the cool thing is anybody notice this about the mask phenomena? I like to call it the phenomena because 
I find right now, any of our guests that are uncomfortable with pulling their hair back completely and they want to have those little bitty hairs, they're completely comfortable with pulling their hair back and not having those bitty hairs. And it's all part of this new mask phenomena that we're doing because they're wearing a mask now. Those little insecurities of having those pieces or the softness around the face is eliminated because technically the softness is now a cloth that's being created that's put there. So what's great about this is this is a great time to be able to talk with your guests cool ways they can try doing with their hair that they never thought was doable before. Now, there's a lot of stuff that happens with when you're using masks and when you're using a mask here, I'm going to kind of funny when I'm looking at the screen and looking down at my mannequin head. Um, one of the biggest things is talking about how comfort the comfort level is, right? So I'm just going to bring her right here. So I don't know about you, but I am wearing a mask all day at work now. And it gets really uncomfortable behind the ears, right? We can all agree to that. So what a great way to glam it up then just to actually slide a clip in there instead use a clip. It's the easiest thing. And it's great because your guests really love to be able to do something a little different than just putting it behind their ears. These are great things to be able to talk about with them when they're behind the chair. Now I have a lot more mask looks to show you because these will really help you behind the chair. So I'm just going to switch here and I'm actually going to bring on one of my guests. <laughs> And this is my daughter, Kayla. Now we know it's limited to models right now. So we have been in quarantine and everything together. So I want you all to know that everything is safe. We're okay. We've been social. Uh, we're okay because we are within our bubble of our social, social distancing. So Kayla is totally fine to be around me right now. So this has been our little like talk about because the biggest thing right now in salons, like I mentioned before, is wearing masks. So we want to be able to create looks that are super easy. The other thing about wearing masks is we're looking at... Um, the comfort level behind the ears. We're also looking at our timing in the salon because in some salons, like I mentioned before, we can't really do a blow dry or a blowout. So this is a really great way of being able to do something different. So with Kayla, I'm actually going to show you how you can create something super easy. Now I call it the four ponytail buns. <laughs> So this is great for all textures. I'm going to split her hair just simply right down the middle. Okay. And I like to share this with the guests as I'm doing it as well. Now, Kayla's hair is naturally textured, so I'm actually just running my fingers along. I do like to use a comb to be able to work through, but if I'm worried about the frizz, then I'm not too stressed about it. So I'm just going to leave it in the middle. Now I'm going to create another section by splitting this one in two. So now that section is created. It's just behind her ear. We have this one, and then we're gonna create this one into two as well. <laughs> All right. So now we have these four sections. Now, Kayla, if you turn your head to the side for one second, we can see we got one, and then we're gonna do the back one, two, three, and then the next one right over here. Perfect. So what is really important, the first ones that I wanna start with, is we're going back just behind the ear, all right? So I'm gonna just use a simple elastic. If you are comfortable with just the ageless elastics themselves, that is completely doable. But this is a really, really, um, just a simple elastic, and I'm just tying it in as we speak. Now, like I said, this is a great look to do on your guest's hair if her hair is wet, if it is dry, if it's partially dry, if it's natural texture, this is something super fast. Now I'm just going to bring that back. Second one, I'm just going to do the same thing. Now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that first ponytail is just right behind the ear. The next one is going to be down at the nape of the neck. So I'm going to do this one just down here like so. Now as I am traveling along, you can notice 
that this is a great time to be able to talk about what you're doing with your guests because this is something that can be super easy for them to do at home or actually recreate on their kids. Now remember, our kids are gonna be in some areas going back to school. So this is gonna be a look that they can help to be able to do when they go back to school. So super easy so far. We have, we're on their third ponytail. Now Kayla's hair would have worked well with those little tiny edgeless. Now we're gonna go back like this. Same thing, just behind her head here. And I'm just gonna just slide that right behind the ear. Now because Kayla's hair is naturally textured, I'm working just with her natural texture itself. Just because I mean, I don't really want to brush it in. I'm okay with that texture. Remember I, I mentioned before about having a little bit more of a natural texture in there. Um, that texture is really big this season. Work with it, you know? Now, I get this question a lot. While I am doing hairstyling or teaching any classes, I get a question about how much is too much texture? Like when somebody comes in and asks for a texture messy bun, there's a fine line, right? Can we all agree to that of like having too much texture and having a little less? What I always say, it's a great balance of the two. So if you're gonna be putting a lot of texture into the bun itself, then I say, try to get the outer side a little bit smoother. Now, if she has a natural cur curl to her hair, that might look really artificial having this super smooth and having this super texture. So what I always suggest, use your products. You wanna go in, you just want to spray with a little bit of hairspray and you're going to grab your blow dryer and you can just go along the outside. And what I'm doing is I'm just bringing down the frizz and I'm laying it down to the head. It doesn't take away that internal texture that's there so that you will have a perfect balance. You're going to see a little bit of the natural texture on the head itself, but you're not going to have that fuzzy haze that can kind of look a little messy, especially when photographed after. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna drop that down. Now with uh, Kayla's hair, I'm gonna do something super easy. I'm just gonna use a two strand braid. Now what this is, is just the twist, right? We're just going, we're twisting it around her hair, giving a little twist. I'm all about creating something that's really easy to do. Now, if, you're, if this is the first time to try it, don't worry, it's perfect. Because all you wanna do is just get it loose. You just wanna have a little movement. Now I'm just gonna, Give it a little bit of a pull so we have a little bit more texture. Now I'm gonna wrap that up, secure it down with a bobby pin. Now, do you remember what we mentioned before about um, creating more texture? Just say if her hair was super, super fine and I wanted to make sure that these buns are gonna look a little bit more girthier, then that's when we bring it that, uh, the micro crimper. Okay, so I love that you're asking me a, uh, the question about, I'm getting one right now, all about do I use extensions when creating an up style? You know what? It really depends on the person that I'm using or that I'm, I'm working with, depending on their look. But ha a lot of the times you can be really strategic on where you place the hair or you use a bit of a filler. So I like to kind of um, incorporate, like I was showing you earlier, like I was using the beige scrunchie, here's a black one. You can get something that's a little bit more neutral and that will help you with creating uh, an up style that is giving you a little bit more movement because all they need is just the tiniest bit of hair to be able to go over top of the filler to be able to give that fullness to um, an up style. Now, there's a little bit of a difference. If they are looking for a fuller ponytail and they don't have that much hair, absolutely, that's when I would look at um, possibly using some extensions if needed. Now, but remember, if you're looking for a fuller ponytail, you can add that little bit of micro crimping in there to give it. And you can also, just because you added that micro crimping, doesn't mean you can't do any other styles on it. You can still go in and use that curling iron that we were using before, just wrapping it around with the micro crimp to give that a little extra. I'm a huge fan of doing that micro crimping just at the base of the look to give it that fullness. You don't have to extend it all the way down to the ends of the ponytail. You can just give it that little bit of fullness and then go ahead and add your uh, curls in it at the ends. 
Now, remember when I talked about doing the curls, curls are a lot different when you are wrapping them around the actual curling iron itself. If it's wrapped around tight under the tongue, you're going to get more of a flatter, glamorous curl. And if you're looking for something with a little bit more natural texture, then you're going to want to be able to use the actual, to remove the tongue, wrap it around the actual um, curling iron itself, giving it a bit of a spin that will give you more volume. And if you notice, I am just holding these buns down. Oh, where do you get those big scrunchies from in the UK? Oh, so those are part of the line that I've created. So if you go on to uh, duplantisofficial.com, which is actually, we're going to be adding this after, you can purchase them and we can definitely send them to you there. But I just wanted to show you with these, thank you for that question, by the way, for with these bobby pins, I am just putting them into her, her bun, just around the edges. I love showing this technique because I feel like a lot of us, and I used to in the beginning, I would like jam in one bobby pin and need like 24 other ones to hold that one in. Does anybody know what I'm saying there? <laughs> Trust me, right? But what it's all about is you don't want to jam in those, but like the bobby pins into all of that hair. It's collected too much hair. The bobby pin is only open enough, if you can see it there, I'm gonna see against the wall, just to accept the amount of hair that it can hold. It doesn't mean it's not gonna be a strong hold. It's just all about the strategic of how you're gonna place it in the hair. Just thinking like a hair engineer, we're gonna crisscross those bobbies. So as soon as I slide that one on the outside, I'm gonna make sure to slide the next one to crisscross it. So in her bun right now, I have one here on the outside, one here on the outside, and one here on the outside. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna crisscross them. Trust me, I have a little one at home, not just this big one. And uh, when I do this in her hair, it doesn't hurt her because we don't want to have those bobby pins that are going to be uh, frustrating all day. That would be really irritating. So this is a great way of doing it. Now, if you find I couldn't hit another bobby pin to get that crisscross, there's also something else that's inside this ponytail that we did first. Remember, we had that elastic. So if you can't crisscross your bobby pins internally, just make sure to slide that bobby pin under that elastic and it will hold. So I'm going along. I thought I saw a bobby pin there, but I think it's just your uh, your balayage. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Oops. Perfect. I was, uh, thank you for that, Sam. Now, for some reason, my sound is like a little bit, I was having a hard time hearing you there, but I'm pretty sure I got that all about how you can do this at home. Now, I'm just going to slide this in. Now, why I'm showing you these three ponytails and these three buns, if you can see, this look is super cute. It's created. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I can hear you so much better. <laughs> go ahead and finish there. Go ahead and finish that. Okay, okay, perfect. I just I want to stay on, to stay on with you though. I'm gonna stay on with you, but go ahead and finish that. Okay, I'm gonna spin you around here and I'm just gonna show with the mask how well this works. Now, Kayla, I'm just gonna get you to hold this for one second, just so I'm not putting it on your eyes. And what's really great is you can actually secure that just in itself right around the bun. This I love showing this to all my healthcare workers right now. So when they go and they are at work, they can do a style that is really helpful to be able to keep their hair out of the way. And they can have their mask on and it's sitting on them comfortably. Cindy, I love it. you got a couple more minutes left. Is there anything else that you wanted to show us? That's really yes. cool. I would totally love to show you one more thing. How's that? Is that okay? This is awesome. Go for it. Okay, okay. Actually, Kayla, you can totally move. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you one more thing here. And if I can too, Kayla, while you, I got you to leave, I'm gonna get you to put your hair into a low ponytail. We're gonna like multitask, right? Let's multitask here. I want to show you something really quickly as well. When we're creating, um, doing these mask looks at work, another quick one that I absolutely love doing on my guests, I find we're getting our braiding back, right? Our braiding skills. And my guests are really giving it a shot to try doing an outside braid 
you know, having the two of them there wearing their mask, it looks super cute. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create that. But the biggest problem that I have when creating that is it's not full. So they have like a little tiny braid and they feel like it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like those celebrities that have that full hair. Now, instead of using um, uh, extensions in it to fill it up, because I don't always have that accessible, I'm going to use a micro crimper again. Now, like I said before, we're used to using the micro crimper and putting it through the hair itself. I'm actually going to show you a quick little trick. This is one of my favorites. So I'm going to do a quick outside braid going along here on the hair. I've brought it all back. Now what I'm going to do is all I'm doing is tapping along the area that that braid is going to sit. Does that make sense? So what's happening here while I do this, I'm gathering it all in one section. Trust me when I tell you it works like a charm. <laughs> I'm just tapping all along that area. And what this is doing is it's keeping this outer area straight and it's bringing up the bulk in the center of where that braid is going to sit. So this is so great because now I'm going to just go ahead and create that braid. It's kind of awesome too, because I don't know about any of you, sometimes I have a hard time following along my line. So one side is going this way, the other side kind of goes a little bit off. When you pre-prep the hair with a line of a micro crimping, what it does is it helps you and it's kind of your guide, right? So now I'm just gonna go along. I'm doing this like really fast, guys, just because I wanted to show you how easy this can be. And now that she has a little bit more of that pop-up in her braid, I can actually work in bringing out that texture so she has a lot more of a texture braid. And you guys saw how thin this hair is on that mannequin. It works like a charm. You can do either one line just down, touching like right where the scalp is, where that braid is gonna be. Sometimes I'll do an extra. What happens is that natural hair goes over top of it and you don't actually see any of the micro crimping. You still look like you just have a really beefy roy braid now i have kayla back i'm going to show one more one more super quick <laughs> so i got a chair here now this is my next favorite thing to do in the salon because buns are huge right now so if her hair was soaking wet and i needed to get her out of the chair which is one of the biggest things right now we're going to pretend i would slick her hair back with a great finishing brush have it back into a ponytail and right at the ends here, I would put in one of my favorite treatments. This is amazing. All of my guests are absolutely loving this. Not only am I giving them a treatment and I'm adding that as an upstyle, like up service to um, what I'm doing, is now I can give her the sleek look because a treatment when it dries still has a touch of a wet look to it, but it has a really great texture and she can rinse this out after. One of my favorites is the Mega Mask. I think I had it beside me, but I think I flung it off the table. <laughs> and it really helps to just twist in that look. And this is another one of those super hot looks for this season. So if your guest likes to have a low chignon, if they like to have a top chignon, you can do this no problem. Now, remember, what's really cool about this? Are you okay, Kayla? Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. What's really cool about this is you got it in. It looks super cute. It's having a treatment. And if you wanted to go ahead and play with those little baby hairs, like we've seen a lot of uh, that's happening on the on the red carpet. Well, we haven't seen them on the red carpet for a little while, but it is a trend that's happening right now is actually embracing our babies. So remember that technique that I showed you earlier? You can roll your tiny Sambia round brush here along the inner sides of your baby hairs and these will all spin into a really soft baby hair just by rolling it along. So you could have all of this in a sleek treatment and this with some baby hairs. <laughs> oh, I'm, I can't hear you again. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That okay. is incredible. That was a huge learning one for me because <laughs> look, at, look at, show that again right there. I, I want to see it yeah, again. Okay. Okay, so we brought it all back in a treatment. Now right? all we're doing is we're playing with those natural texture baby hairs. We're just rolling it along the outside of our hair, and there you go. It just pulls them out. And when you're aligning that with your blow dryer, giving that little roll, it is beautiful if well, someone has a natural texture to their hair a little curl by spinning that it actually encourages those pieces to stay together yes sandy this has been awesome uh, you know what it's so cool is you are seeing this whole 90s thing coming back this yes. 90s 
trend. And I was talking it yesterday on my Mannequin Monday, how when a decade becomes 20 years old, it starts to make its way back and becomes very trendy again. And then what I'm talking about in the 90s is I'm starting to see these bands of color, these bands of color that are happening in the front. And then these low, messy buns, exactly like what you did. And then this messy kind of texture. I mean, these shaggy pixies. Think Wyona, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. This has right. been tremendous. One of my big t- takeaways was mm-hmm. when you were talking about natural curly hair, like when mm-hmm. it gets curly underneath and not as curly on top and how you're actually going in with your hand and stretching out with a blow dryer. I just never f- thought about picking up a blow dryer and actually doing that, thinking it might cause frizz. Cindy, yeah. you are such a joy. And let's make sure, Kurt, let's bring up Cindy's website. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. All right, this is, some of you were asking, where can I get so scrunchy? I got to tell you, she's got some really cool little clips and little bends and, and, and grips <laughs> and things like that. And you can check her out. Go to Duplantis Hair Official. Take a screenshot of this now, hairofficial.com. And Cindy, are, are you going to be coming out consistently with these little, little uh, accessories that you work with hair, like your scrunchies uh-huh. and stuff? Yes, a hundred percent. And in fact, I love coming out with new content for that. And I love other hairstyles that do the same thing. I love to show the work. And I was inspired by you, Sam, by doing that because we need to support each other on how to create our fun looks, right? We do. That's right. Artists support (laughs) artists. Uh, What else would you like to share? Where can they find you? Tell me where they can find you aside from here, what what you're doing. You also, you're with Chatters and you also, are are you doing any podcasts or anything like that? Um, I actually just created a podcast with a friend of mine that will be posted and I'll add that onto my Instagram because I'm not sure exactly what the title of that is, but I am, I do a lot of frequency on the morning show in Canada. It's called the Marilyn Dennis show. And I do a lot of work on a different morning shows for CHCH and those are all Canadian, but I do like to repost everything onto my social media. I love interaction with other hairstylists on just my Cindy Duplantis page, Facebook or Instagram, and also on our Duplantis hair official. I have an amazing amazing team that we like to make sure that we're inspiring each other. That's what it's all about. It's not, there's no competitions here. There's no anything. Let's share and inspire each other. (laughs) We we love you so much. Um, I just want to say, you know, it was great seeing you make sure guys that you follow Cindy at Cindy Duplantis on Instagram. I follow her. I enjoy following her. And then also, if you ever see her come to the U.S. and doing a program, because we will, it's so important we get back to live education, like us being able to hug yes. it out. We yes. will get back to that someday. So make sure you follow her. You'll know where she's at. Cindy, uh-huh. I really want to see you. I want to invite you to a show must go on to one of our oh shows. I would love that. I want to I want to invite you on the live that I do with Chatters. You have to come on that I as well. Love. Be so great, and that's you know, another. These lives are so great and interactive. I love it. Yeah, you know how I feel about chatters. Give my love to chatters. Oh, and say, love you, <laughs> thank you again. We'll be reaching out to you, and thank you so much for sharing all of what you did today. And give Car- Kayla a hug for me, okay? I will. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. <laughs> wow, Kurt, that was awesome, buddy. That was so educational. I just loved how she shared and what she did and everything. So that was incredible. Um, a couple things, Mr. G. I mean, if you like what you're seeing today, we're going to certainly invite you guys to follow us on Instagram if you're not following us already, because we've got our daily tips, our daily tricks and techniques there. And also just some really good motivating things that we want to share with you consistently. So make sure you follow us on uh, at Sam via hair and then follow us on Facebook, Sam via pro. And then once again, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, that's YouTube slash Sam via or Sam via pro. Now, tomorrow, Kurt, what do we got coming up? We got Wellness Wednesday, correct, my yes, friend? Yes, we do, sir. We have Wellness Wednesday coming up with Andrew. That's at 4 p.m. West Coast, 7 p.m. Eastern time. This is a new hour for Andrew. I really like this hour, Sam, the time oh, yeah. because people can really wind down and get into their own personal well-being. And Andrew, of course, hosting a really incredible show that we're real proud of. That's tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Western uh, Pacific time out here in the West. That's where we are located, myself yeah in particular. <laughs> and now we, he also has special guests yet. Yeah, tomorrow is going to be about discovering daily practices. So for those of you that just need a moment to kind of gather yourself together and get centered, Andrew's really a great person to do that for you. And that's tomorrow once again. 
Uh, Mannequin Monday, Kurt, is next week. We got that next week, August the 17th. Once again, I'm excited about that. That's 11 a.m. I'm going to revisit the mullet revival. That's right. The mullet. I have your hope for me, Pete. Yeah, look at Kurt. I don't know if you guys remember, but years ago I talked about the mullets coming back, the mullets coming back. And I, but I called it, I kept calling the moule, the moule, moule. It's not so achy yeah. that it breaks your heart. So I want to revisit that and really give you some commercial ways to approach it. So it's not so mullet, but it's more really soft and it has a degree of shortness and length and it's also versatile. So that's next Monday, uh, August the 17th at 11 a.m. And Tuesday transformations. Now, Tuesday transformations, you just experienced one. Uh, these are going to be with Andrew and I alternating every Tuesday. Just make sure you keep an eye on the calendar. But we also will have guests. So I really want to make sure that you know that next, uh, when we have uh, Transformation Tuesday, that's going to be August the 18th. And I'm going to break down the basics. I'm going to really get down into some basics in regards to, you know, the principles of movement or the found fundamental breakdown and just movements and how we actually get to the end result and understanding the why. And then, Kurt, we go back to Wellness Wednesday next week, August the 19th. That's again with Andrew. And he has a special guest with him, and that's Ronette Enos, who is a business strategist for Salon Cadence changing your money story. And I think we're all concerned about that, Kurt, in terms of what everybody's going through. And our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to all of our colleagues in California. The main thing to do, my friends, is overprotect, don't overact. We, we're, we're there with you. We're supporting you. And uh, know that we're, we're definitely carrying you in our thoughts every day. Uh, Kurt, this one's special to you, buddy. We're also going to be hosting a special 90-minute foundation training with our Sam Via partner schools. And that's starting in September. And we want you to be on the lookout for a special invite coming soon. Kurt, tell me a little bit yeah, more about that. Sure enough, it's called Skills Up Student Training. And for the first time now, we will, along with Sam and Andrew Carruthers, once a month, we'll be providing a 90 minute class to our partner school students. Those that are partner schools with us will have the exclusive opportunity to learn directly from Sam and Andrew once a month it's the first is on September 10th. We will be starting to give some public announcements on this in the coming weeks and days and more realistically. So for you here watching today, you're one of the first to learn about this. We're excited about it. The students around America that are partner schools of ours will get to enjoy direct education from both Sam and Andrew once a month. So that starts September 10th. As Sam said, you'll be hearing a lot more about this as we go forward. If any of you are interested in learning more about our school, a program, you can contact me <laughs> at Kurt, K-U-R-T at sandvia.com. That's the quickest way to reach me and I'll get you started. So look I'll forward to that coming up, Sam, starting September 10th. Thank you for that, Kurt. And then we have Show Must Go On. Our Show Must Go On's, guys, those are a nice day for you on Sunday to kick back, relax in your own comfortable environment. And we're excited for the one coming up the end of the month, August the 30th. Why? Because it's all about lived in precision. And we have our special guest, Tippy Shorter. We love Tippy Shorter. She's going to be joining us on, once again, August the 30th. The show must go on. And our topic is going to be lived in precision. Isn't that interesting? Don't forget to visit us on that. And obviously, make sure you check out our August promotion. She's every tool there. Cindy was working with the texture iron. She referred to it as a micro crimper. It is gives you that effect, but it's even more. It changes and alters the texture of the hair, as you can see how Cindy was using that. Also, she was working with the sleeker flat iron, and she's working with the Sanvia blow dryer. So some of you were asking questions on those tools. So do me a favor. Make sure you check out our August promotions. Go to www samvia.com. Some great, great specials on some of our shears. And don't forget to check out our distributors too, our Redken distributors throughout Canada and through the U.S. Kurt, buddy, I want to thank you so much for manning that Wizard of Oz backstage, brother. It's always fun teaming up with you, Sam. All right, buddy. I love you, man. And once again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Do us all a favor, respect each other, and most of all, respect yourself. Thanks for joining.